Earlier in today's show, we learned about the new contractor training programs that are now being offered by roofing manufacturers like GAF. With an emphasis on workmanship, quality products, and a final inspection, select contractors can now offer industry-leading warranties. So let's meet up with our contractor, Andy Lindis, to learn more about the components that support a 50-year roofing system. Obviously, Andy, long before we get to this stage of the construction process, the homeowner has to make some decisions on the type of roofing that's going on, the color of the shingles, but does it go beyond that from a homeowner standpoint? Should they really get involved with all the other components that are involved in a re-roofing project? You know, so often when, when I sit down with a homeowner, they're, they're pretty well educated on the actual shingle itself. They know what type of shingle they want, what color they want usually, but they don't know what goes into the whole system. And I like to sit down and show them a few different types of ice and water shield or leak barrier, a few different types of underlayment, the differences in the type of venting that's available to you. Not just the shingles, it's the whole roof as a system. It's my job to sit down with the homeowner to make sure they're getting the best job that they possibly can get. And as we've seen on today's show, you can have the best product in the world, but it comes down to the workmanship and the attention to detail and the installation. So let's walk through some of the different components that make up the system, as you put it, and talk about the installation of each of those components. Well, I'd like to start from the bottom of the roof on up, and one of the first things that goes on is your leak barrier. What we have here is your weather watch leak barrier ice and water shield. Now, a lot of ice and water shields that I've worked with over the past are really, really tacky right from the get-go. So the first thing it sticks to, that's done, you're over. Boy, I've experienced that as well. And you, as I understand it, you want it to be that sticky, but can it be detrimental as well? It can because it can create air pockets. Anytime there's an air pocket, you puncture that, that can be a potential spot for a leak. See, with the weather watch, you can put it down. It's one of the only leak barriers I've ever worked with that's actually adjustable, so you make sure it goes in the right spot. And then once it gets hot, it's activated and actually becomes more tacky than almost any other leak barrier out there. So where are you putting ice and water shield, or in this case, the weather watch system on this roof? Well, there's a couple different ways of looking at that, Stu. It's what's required by code and what we do for our warranty and GAF warranties. Required by code is just along the rakes and up the valleys. So what we actually want to do is go four feet past the interior wall with the ice and water shield. We want to go up the rakes with the ice and water shield. We want to go along the hip or the ridge with the ice and water shield. And then what we actually do is go one row down the middle of a valley. Then we put a piece of valley tin over the top of it one row on each side to ensure you have absolutely no leaking anywhere on the house. No way. So you have essentially a triple layer of protection in that valley between the two layers of leak barrier and the valley tin itself in there. That's well, never going to leak. It's never going to leak. You know, valleys are one of those spots that always tend to leak on a person's house. It's one of those areas. So you, you got your perforations in your roof, you got the, the sidewall flashing, and you got your valley areas. If you can go a little bit extra in those areas to ensure that for 50 years, you're never going to have to worry about that roof, you know, for a little bit extra money, it's well worth it. And you know, when I think about it, that's an area that the consumer can request. Make sure that there's adequate leak barrier product on your roof. I know in my case, I've made sure that it's on there. I've never had a problem. Okay, so that takes care of the weather watch, uh, the leak barrier. What's the next product in the process? Well, you see here, we have our Tiger Paw underlayment. As you notice, it doesn't look like your normal roof decking underlayment. Feel that. It's very oh, wow, hard. Wow, that is a weird. Yeah. Can you tear it? A little bit different. No, nope. it's going to be a lot stronger than what you normally see in a house, like your 15 pound felt. So I show people this is what a lot of roofers use. This is what you call your normal 15 pound felt. After that 15 pound felt, they came out with something a little bit better. It's like a fiberglass reinforced 30 pound felt. Again, pretty easy to tear. The problem with those felts is every time you're up there whacking away with your hammer, those hammer tackers have a tendency to tear it. Yeah, sure. They get little tears about an inch long. Those tears, again, can be a spot where it can leak. As you can see, this is very, very tough. It's not going to tear. Two, feel the back side of it here? Yeah, sure. Compared to the front side? It's actually moisture wicking. So if you have any moisture in the actual roof deck of yourself, it's going to pull that out of the house and really going to start to alleviate any type of mold problems that you could have. And I know through all the different programs that we've done over the years, moisture is the number one enemy of a house. And so this product, again, it really shows the evolution of the industry. And so as far as installing it, you want to make sure that you have this side down, but anything else? I mean, is it grippy enough for people to walk around up on the roof? Your yeah, you, you give that a feel there. It's going to be a lot easier to walk on than any type of the felts out there, so it's going to be safer. It may cost a little bit more money, but in the long run, you don't have to worry about the moisture in the wood, and you don't have to worry about every time you hit it with a tamer tacker, that's going to create a crack and have water inside your house. Again, workmanship and peace of mind. That's what we're talking about on today's show. Okay, that's two out of five in the WeatherWatch system. 
What's the next step in the process? Well, there's a lot of different flashings that go into a house. I want to show you this. Where a roof meets the actual siding, we want that water to be able to come down, hits what we call our kick out, kicks it away from the house. You've been on window jobs with me before sure. and other siding jobs. When those roofs come into that house, that's almost always where you see that rot. Yeah. I was on one house, it cost him $7,000 more because somebody didn't do a $6 part on the house. Seven grand for six bucks, again, pretty easy to do. It's not something that's required by code, but it's required by us to make sure water doesn't get to the house. Again, the attention to detail is what separates roofers. It's a lot of the things that the homeowner doesn't see that saves them in the long run. And again, the homeowner, these are all products that they should be asking about. And if you're an educated consumer, you're going to know to ask these questions and make sure that your roofer uses this. Correct. Okay. So that takes care of about what, three of the products out there in the system. What about venting? What are you going to do to accommodate the venting on this home? Well, there's lots of different vents you can get on a roof. There's power vents, there's those turbine vents, there's the turtle vents, a whole lot of different type of venting. My favorite, and I think the absolute best, is a ridge venting system. Again, that's where the hottest part of your roof is. That's where all the hot air is going. Why not put the vent there so it can get out of the house easily? Now, all ridge vents are not created equal. They're, they're just not. Most of what you see comes in like little four or five foot sections. Sure, they're in a box like this and you yeah. just lay them out. The problem with those is a lot of times they don't match up properly or don't ma match up right. So then they start to go get a little wavy or maybe somebody tries to cheat a little bit. They're only going to be a couple inches short, so they're going to make a little bit of a gap there. It's an excellent spot for critters to get in. These actually come in rolls, rolls over the entire ridge, nailed in certain spots. You're not actually going to shut off on the ventilation. has a snow filter, which is very important. Minnesota, Wisconsin, we gotta talk about snow. Snow's gonna get on your roof. You wanna make sure that it's not gonna be able to get in your attic. So this particular system has an actual snow filter and has a very good rating to make sure that the air can get out of the attic very quickly. When that's all said and done, we use the Timber Tex ridge cap. Now, if you had something that's made specifically for that reason, wouldn't you wanna use it? Oh, I definitely would want it in my house, that's for sure. You can see there's perforations along the back here. So they're gonna be cut to the perfect size. You're not gonna see a lot of, a lot of variation oh, in right, that. Right along there, so the contractor doesn't even have to think about it and take time to measure, because those are all pre-measured for them. Again, a little bit more expensive than using leftover shingles, but it's gonna look a lot nicer. And the trick is to install these in the opposite direction where the prevailing winds come, because the ridge cap is gonna be the highest point in the roof, so it's more susceptible to wind damage than any other point. So you want to make sure that when wind comes, it's going against the grain of this. It's not going to be able to peel it up. Be sure to tune in next week on today's Home Remodeler as we check out the shingle installation process and complete the roofing system with attic insulation and the installation of leaf guard gutters. Now here are some key points to help summarize today's show. If you're considering a new roof on your home, start by learning about the warranty being offered with your shingle. Oftentimes, what's really covered and what isn't can be surprising. And it's important for you to know what's included with the shingles you select. Next, learn about the support products that make up your roofing system. Leak barriers, custom flashings, and underlayments all can make a huge difference on how long a roof will last. And these are not the products you want to cut corners on. And finally, there's no substitute for workmanship. It's ultimately who stands behind your warranty when replacing a roof. So who you select to install the components will be the most important decision you need to make. Look for a local company with a strong manufacturer warranty. And as always, be sure to check references. Well, we're all out of time for this week's show. Hope you've enjoyed it. We'll see you again next time on today's Home Remodeling.